And here they are. So as mentioned, uh, two decks from the past. Uh, Madolce against Spellbook. No, this is not a Time Wizard <laughs> tournament. We are here at YCR Dortmund Live for you guys. And uh, what do you think of this matchup uh, that we obviously <laughs> are super prepared for? Because basically, like, uh, if you play Madolce at this event, uh, you really want to play against the Shizu Tirlemans because the deck is very good against this matchup. But facing Spellbooks, uh, I think you don't ever really expect this to happen. But, that being said, uh, I think that Spellbooks, uh, in this format also with the Spellbook Judgment, you give really a huge, a huge advantage with the Jaugen as well, as you said. Because basically it's like uh, what, what the Flawanderous deck does with the statue. Basically you put up a body and then you basically protect it with the Spellbook of Fate. And I think this is a good strategy. But, on the other hand, I think uh, if I were John, I would not be super happy to play against uh, Madolce. Uh, because basically your strategy is focused uh, uh, to play against uh, most of the current meta decks uh, that are the most popular, but uh, Madolce, I think it's not super easy to, to play against. Absolutely, and you can see him smiling as soon as the first Madolce card is revealed, but for any of you guys who don't know, he's actually his opponent, less your opponent, uh, is actually a content creator as well, uh, and he's actually quite known in uh, especially the German community for creating, uh, uh, you know, this kind of uh, uh, surprising decks, I would say. So I wouldn't surprise me if he was one of the people and players to this weekend, Unuma Dolce. Yep. So maybe he will not get caught off guard by this opening, but surely great start by Alessio. We haven't seen too much of Fenrir this weekend, but it's one of the best cards, of course, from Kashtira, who are just getting better and better in the future with new product release, so... Yeah, I mean, it's one of these cards that uh, really puts you far ahead in the game, because, like, you get to search another one, and, uh, and also it's very annoying to play around. Absolutely, and here, as we have seen already from Eugen, this is why you want to start things off with the Glass Souffle, which is so strong against the element, but it's not the element he's up against. So, Chocola mode, of course, uh, gonna come down, and this is already stuff we have seen in the previous round, at least a fair amount. And honestly, I don't mind this deck. It's uh, definitely a bold choice, uh, but when you expect to play against uh, I would say like maybe seven to eight out of twelve rounds against the tier element. I think it could be worth it. I mean, the deck overall, uh, I think it's super powerful. Has a lot of plays, and you can extend your combo. Uh, the only thing I'm concerned with is uh, Alessio's strategy because, like, uh, we have seen this deck being played with multiple Ishizu cards. Yeah. And Alessio is only playing three Mudora. And that's it. I absolutely agree with you. Um, I think playing multiples makes sense because when your opponent finds out you're playing uh, a non-tier deck, uh, they just want to use Agido and Kelbeck and just mill 10. Uh, but then if you play multiple copies of Keldo and uh, uh, Mudora, then they are just not that incentivized to do so. But here we see one of the Vernusilf, the duck, uh, one of the best artworks uh, personally I've ever seen. It's so nice. But yeah, for the rest, uh, this is a huge opening. And, yeah, uh, no, I mean... Uh, um, we can check his extra deck maybe to see what options he has. Uh, probably Abyss Dweller is in there somewhere, but uh, he can go for Baguska. There are a few options, of course, depending on the matchup. And here... Uh, he's probably going again for the souffle, I would guess. But let's see. Yeah, souffle so strong, and what an opening from Alessio. We have seen uh, during the past uh, events sometimes uh, Madolce is being played, and I have to say that uh, keeps doing uh, his things uh, mm -hmm. still very well with new supports and new cars as well. Uh, and also like the souffle in this format is. Uh, it's very good. And here, as you can see, uh, Alessio, pretty confident with the deck, uh, knows what he's doing, uh, will try his best to get ahead with this advantage. And uh, the Spellbook deck from uh, his opponent uh, is already with the back against the wall. Yeah, won't be easy to break this board. Let me check 
if we can just try and bring up some of these engines, because uh, unfortunately he's playing nine bestials, but <sighs> they are useless <laughs> against uh, uh, an entirely Earth deck like the one from Alessio. And we can already see, I think yeah. he has the A couple of actually them, right? Yeah, I think he has Druid and Saronir, and uh, you can see how just useless they are. Yeah, and here we see, of course, the fresh sea start, which uh, is actually pretty annoying to deal with. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is done. So his opponent will now pick up his card. Let's see, he's definitely looking for some of these turbo engine cars. Uh, Nadir, maybe Allure of Darkness would be nice. Which he drew. Yeah. And now, surprisingly, we get to see the souffle right away. Targeting uh, Angeli and uh, a very nice ultimate rare copy from the graveyard. But yeah. As mentioned, the Spellbook deck from uh, basically nine, almost ten years ago. And uh, that's pretty much the same uh, for Madolce, because uh, we have mentioned in our interview how Chris LeBlanc uh, won a YCS recently, but it was funny enough uh, the 10 year anniversary of his first YCS win, which was with Madolce. Yeah. So <laughs> it has been a while also for the Madolce deck, 10 years since his first YCS win. Maybe we will get a second win this weekend with the deck. But yeah. Now Allure of Darkness, uh, and uh, here is where he will reveal what he's playing, maybe. Uh, for now, of course, uh, Bestial is not really much of a tell, but this is one of the tech cards uh, from the German player. This allows you to put back a level 6 from your hand or field, which is really nice, and draw two cards. So this is already quite nice from... Chan. Yeah, because he has to put it at the bottom of the deck. Yep. So, gonna shuffle his deck to draw Shu. And then put the Bestial on the bottom. Uh, which is great news because you really don't want to draw yeah. Bestials in this matchup. So, picks up two fresh cards. Another Allure Ooh, Darkness. So, good. will not stop anytime soon. Uh, looking like an Exodia deck out <laughs> here. So, let's see what he picks up. Uh. So drawing to, I think, a couple monsters. Uh, is that a Jaugen? Uh, which actually wouldn't be that bad here, you know? <laughs> Even just normal summoning it. For how wild uh, that sounds. But here is uh, the part where Alessio gets to know what deck he's up against. Uh, it is the Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. Oh my, how much time has passed since last time we have seen this card in action. Uh, and it gets met by an Herald of the Orange Light. I think... Uh, I mean, you have to activate it, right? Because like, if you're yeah. up against spell books, you know that uh, a lot of spells will be played. Yeah. And now Magician of Souls. Um, Great, I'm great really start. curious to see here now what Alessio is thinking because I, I, I like for a second like you see a couple of Allure of Darkness and then uh, and here another of his uh, very unique engines which are the Jackal King right from his deck to the graveyard definitely an interesting build of a deck for Chan. This brings back so many memories from uh, those days. Which were pretty much right before uh, my successes in the game and yours. Because yours never really came. No, we spelled <laughs> <not> really. <laughs> but, yeah. Here we see another one of those really good spells from the deck, which is the Nadir Servant. Uh, great card. Again, one coming back to free with the latest Forbidden and Limited list, uh, which gives a lot of these decks a new tool 
and uh, unfortunately I think uh, the promenade is activated great card basically negates the effect of a card which uh, in this case will be the Nadir Servant and not just a monster so it can negate the spell and traps uh, <laughs> it's tough oh, it's tough because he also drew one of the I remember even back in the day worst the spell book to open which is uh, the spell book of life uh, which really was the one you didn't wish to draw but just wanted to search and now yeah he will activate the bestials uh, on uh, the jackal yep not that uh, it's that threatening to be fair It seems like Alessio opening might have been too strong in this one, but let's see if his opponent will find a way to fight back. Spellbook of Life at the moment uh, not activatable because you need another Spellbook card in the end. And now the last Ooh. engine is okay. revealed. As you could have guessed, it is the Fleur, so he is playing Dogmaticas. Of course, Nadir Servant was already a big tell, but uh, it's tough to actually go in any direction from here. Oh, yeah, and another there is one. another Herald. Wow. wow. <laughs> Double Herald from Alessio. Really way too much. I think we have seen the writing on the walls on this one. The handshake, even though it's only game one, cars are picked up and it is Alessio who takes this one home. What a start uh, from the Italian. Uh, we mentioned how both are playing decks from basically 10 years ago, adapted to the current format, and uh, Alessio really showing why he is with such a good score here in round six. Uh, great stuff, honestly. Uh, he set up the board uh, pretty well, even though he could not have guessed what he was up against. He kept his composure and was trying his best. Uh, but I gotta say, between the two, uh, his opponent uh, uh, really got punished because we mentioned how both our decks built for the tier matchup. But while Alessio built his deck with cards that can be, I would say, more useful against other matchups, like the Sphere mode, the Mudora, uh, his opponent is playing nine copies of Bestials. Yeah, which, which are unfortunately completely useless against Madolce. He opened three copies uh, after the Allure of Darkness, and that is what costed him the match. I'm sure now, though, we'll get to adjust uh, their decks uh, with this side decks. So, what I'm asking you first and foremost is, uh, what is Chang gonna side in? <laughs> <laughs> nice question, because basically your deck is uh, like here to play against, as you said, Ichizu tier. Yeah. Uh, like going first triple tactic talents could be good, although I have to say like his side deck is oriented to play against either going second, yeah. because there are a lot of cars uh, to go second. So also he could choose to go second this kind of matchup. Although we have seen how powerful the Madolce deck is, so yeah. I will not. I wouldn't pick uh, second trust honestly. Myself. I think the strategy could be to try and uh, just uh, turbo through as much as possible and then side the in the one copy of the Dogmatica Punishment and then when you end with the Jaugen just like 10 years ago uh, you end with Jaugen plus uh, uh, either a spellbook uh, face down uh, to just protect uh, the Jaugen or the Dogmatica Punishment yeah. and then uh, you just uh, pretty much play it as if it was a Flowandry's deck with the statue. Uh, on the other end, Alessio uh, has a few tools. I think uh, Dimension Shifter is one that should not be underestimated because the spellbook cards in the graveyard are quite usable. And if you get rid of all of them, uh, that's good. And also, evenly matched and RP Feather Dusters are always cards that are going to be yeah, good against uh, sure. such a deck. So we'll see if our players uh, had the, the similar thoughts as us, uh, but they are ready for game two. So let's find out who will be the winner of game two.
And here they are. So again, as mentioned, let's see if uh, he will put his hands on some of these interruptions. Uh, the one and only, uh, he, he does open double allure. This hand is really good from uh, the German player. Double allure of darkness. I think I see a spell book uh, as well. Uh, yeah, and it is a great opening. He can use the knowledge he already has in his hand uh, to draw two cards afterwards uh, when he gets uh, to the Magician. So he will turbo through a lot of these resources uh, with the Spellbook of Knowledge in his hand. And of course, the one and only Spellbook of Judgment, which I really looking forward to seeing in action after so many years and you can see alessio smiling yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah just uh, came fresh uh, out of the forbidden limited list um, and finally we get to see it uh, in action i have waited a long time for this uh, and i'm excited to see it uh, as you can see basically for every spell card and i repeat spell card which uh, means that it also counts other spells not just the spell books you get to summon Jaugen, you get to summon uh, some of these gravekeeper tech cards we have been keeping uh, hidden from you guys and uh, let's see where this goes uh, Wow, he actually goes for a link, a link summon, summon yeah. right away. I thought he was going to use, uh, you know, the Magician Soul before, but instead he goes for the Link we have not seen, I think, uh, maybe ever in action. Yeah. So I'm going to try and bring it up for you guys on screen. But essentially what it does, it's very similar to a Crescent, I would say. So if uh, any of you guys don't know what that does, it's essentially you get to reveal three and then your opponent uh, adds randomly one of them to your end. So that's really, really strong. And the first card is added back. Uh, again, I'm really surprised that he didn't uh, just try and uh, draw some cards with Magician Souls uh, before. Yeah, I mean, I think he wants to play it more safely, but uh, I mean, now he could activate the Spell Book of Judgment uh, and then uh, going for uh, the draw to yep. play. Um, for sure you go for Spellbook of Judgment and there it goes, Spellbook of Judgment uh, being activated. Uh, now he can follow it up with Allure of Darkness or Spellbook of Knowledge and there it goes. So we can put a counter up uh, to just uh, keep, uh, you know, these numbers of spells that are going to be activated uh, throughout this turn, hopefully. It's at least free, so we get to see the Jaugen afterwards in the end phase. That's the main plan for this deck. And what a throwback! Chaos Sorcerer being banished by a lure of darkness. Wow. We're not in 2013, by the way. So yeah, we really <laughs> aren't. Uh, there is no priority. There is. This is actually Chaos Sorcerer, not a Time Wizard event uh, being played in 2022. What a time to be alive, really. <laughs> and here we see the knowledge. Again, draw two. Pretty good card. Uh, he's thinking uh, uh, whether to actually send uh, one he controls or one from the end, and it does. So gets rid of the link, uh, draw two cards, uh, and the counter is now on two spells. So he needs only one more spell to be able to summon that Jaugen. Yeah, I mean any card for or like a lure of darkness. He has, he has, a, he has so much. Yeah, so many, so many different fusion. ones. Uh, yeah. And I already can see a lot of spells uh, in his hand. So. Uh, so I see. No, unfortunately, you know that maybe he has two spells that he cannot activate. Ooh, he has wow. The fate. Is it fate or is it another? Should be fate. Okay. And another knowledge. Yeah, it's fate and knowledge. So without wow. summons, because now he's forced to go for a bestial. So he goes for a bestial, but I don't. I'm not sure that he has access to it. That's why I really would have liked to use magician soul to draw. 
this is getting really risky because now he gets to the bestial. But if it's just two spells, he's activated. This is uh, really underwhelming by Khan. Yeah, I mean, drawing two cards in that spot, I think, would have yeah. made the difference. Because uh, now he's only left uh, with this tree. Yeah, he has to set at least the fate, and then uh, in the end phase can uh, special summon a magician. Uh, but. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunate, unfortunate uh, stuff here. Yeah, he's just forced to set you, and this changes so much. Because just any spell was good enough to summon the Jaguar and probably shut everything from Alessio, who is now instead, uh, I think, he's screaming with joy inside him uh, uh, about this ending turn where he basically is forced to summon a uh, magician. Yeah. Uh, very unfortunate uh, stuff here by the German player and yeah, Alessio in the driving seat. If he picks up uh, evenly matched, uh, this would be brutal. Yeah, either one uh, evenly matched or Arpis Feather Duster or Kashtira as well, Defender. Uh... Yeah, because all these bestials are completely useless as we know against the deck from Alessio. Yeah, as you mentioned, Castilla Ferrier uh, evenly matched uh, so many good cards, uh, and he has access also to RP Feather Duster, Pot of Prosperity, to look for those cards. What is it gonna be? Alessio picks up his uh, sixth card. He has it, I think. Huh? I think I he saw, also has I saw. a trap card, right? <laughs> Yeah, he declared Battle yeah. Phase. Battle Phase is declared by Alessio. We might see an evenly matched uh, really soon. Uh, and this could be brutal for the German player. Wow. Yeah, he allows it. Uh... Ooh, and surprisingly enough. Uh... Uh, maybe he's, uh, he's activating the one to bounce back. First one. Just, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But would you really do it now? Because now you're left without, like, you don't even need to have an evenly matched. Would you do it anyways? No. No, what, the evenly matched, yeah. uh, you might as well. Like, if you are setting up the board, uh, why not? Uh, you will keep it uh, useless uh, in the end. But, like, yeah, it, it doesn't go for it. And I don't know. Alessio might have been bluffing. Uh, I think uh, it was definitely a correct decision uh, here to go to the battle phase and try and use evenly matched. But yeah, I'm really, really surprised by the decision to use fate and get rid of the last uh, phase down card. Because now uh, Khan is back on six cards, but they don't really interact with whatever Alessio is going to throw at him now. Yeah, especially because like he has at least a couple of bestials in his hand, yeah, which are not useful. I mean, they're completely like useless against Madol Chess. And uh, now he's using the Petting Cesar and then uh, triggering the Chocolat. Yep, he goes for Souffle, then Chocolat gets the wood cake. Uh, this is pretty much what we have seen in game one and uh, already looked convincing uh, but when you are up against uh, no interruptions and you know that there are no interruptions because pretty much you know every single card that your opponent has added uh, this makes your life just so much easier and yeah uh, it seems really tough uh, for the italian not to find a winning uh, line um, sure there are some resources back uh, uh, which kind of reminds me of Sky Striker in a way, you know, but it's not exactly engaged. So, uh, what you get the next turn, uh, sure, you can do a few cute things, but I really would have liked the fate uh, to stay face down from, from Khan. If your opponent has evenly, you have to allow them to use it, and then. Yeah, especially because, like. Uh... I think considering all the, the, the things he had on board, uh, Fate was the, the better one, no? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, if uh, your opponent evenly matches you, Fate is useless. 
because then uh, you have to either keep uh, Fate or the monster, and then that means Fate uh, is no longer an option. Uh, but that's the deck, uh, so you know that if you're faced against the evenly matched, uh, you need to find a solution, and unfortunately, Alessio might as well have been bluffing. But here we see the Tiaramisu, which is so good, once again not uh, getting rid of uh, every single card left uh, from uh, Khan. And just like in game one, once again, we get to set the Madolce Promenade, or Promenade, if we want to use the French accent, which uh, is just a uh, negation. Uh, it's uh, really, really strong here. Can negate uh, pretty much uh, any fretful, even the evenly matched, in case uh, uh, Khan uh, actually sided it out going first, which I doubt. But. Um, I mean, even if we just end on this, honestly, I I don't mind uh, this opening. Uh, luckily, there are still 20 minutes remaining, so it's not like they should pay too much attention to the clock yet. But yeah, just reading the shuttle, uh, I think Yu-Gi-Oh is getting more and more a feel spell uh, kind of uh, game at the moment uh, uh, and uh, Madolce Shadow one of the OG ones uh, but uh, still really annoying uh, nowadays uh, it's uh, basically what gives uh, this deck uh, some uh, grinding potential but I think the deck is especially good in this format because uh, like everybody's playing bestials and uh, I mean basically you shut down your opponent's strategy with playing Madolce's and also, I think putting these bodies on the field are very annoying to play against. Not only the Fenrir, but like the, X, the XYZ that the deck can afford are incredibly powerful. And uh, there's the... The, the, the souffle is amazing, honestly. And yeah, here, just going back uh, and clarifying the action from Alessio. But in the meantime, I think uh, we can uh, go back to us uh, while they uh, figure out this uh, game state situation as we were saying uh, pretty much uh, they they were just uh, having a little bit of a language barrier which can happen when we play in europe with so many lovely different countries uh, and it mainly involved uh, uh, declaring uh, the battle phase with the evenly matched uh, and uh, it was unclear whether the cars activated by uh, the german player were declared on the attempt to enter the battle phase, which of course, as all of you should know, uh, means that if you then activate a card, like it was back in the day with Formula Synchron, uh, <laughs> I mean, you have to essentially replay and uh, the battle phase is yet not entered, yeah. which means we are still in main phase one, while if uh, the declare to enter the battle phase and then uh, the German player agreed, those cards were played uh, during the battle phase, which means we are now in Memphis 2. So this is pretty much what they're clarifying. So outside of this, uh, uh, I think uh, we are getting really impressed by these Madolce decks. What do you think? Do you think that they actually have what it takes to make it to the top 64? Uh, I think they have, because like, uh, as we said previously, uh, I think not only they have the advantage to play against Bestials, because I think Bestials package are one of the most played one this weekend mm -hmm. and are one of the most consistent ones because basically you get to search the ones you don't have during the end phase and then you keep recycling them as we saw like in the previous future matches we have had. But especially I think that with the new Ishizu cards, yeah. basically you can afford to mill cards and then your opponent, if, if they see you're playing Ishizu cards, they are afraid because like they don't really want to let you mill. You know? Yeah, because essentially what we were discussing, uh, even in the meta discussion or going into this event, is 
um, when there is such a deck, such a deck like uh, it is for Ishizu tier that is so dominant uh, and clearly the best deck uh, at the moment, uh, uh, there are two ways to go for it. Uh, Either you join them or you beat them. So if you join them again, we've seen multiple type of builds. But when you try to beat them, uh, you really need to understand the dynamics of Ishizu tier elements. And I think it is one of the most unique decks we have ever seen uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh! And that is because of the dynamic of milling cards of the top of your deck. So as you mentioned, uh, while in the mirror match, uh, uh, it gets uh, into a very intricate thing where you don't really want to use the effects of milling uh, before an Abyss Dweller. Uh, when you're playing against a deck that's not a Shizu tier, you always mill 10, because yeah. 10 is just a, a plus on your side. But when you're preparing against a uh, Shizu tier, you need to take that into consideration, because milling 10 cards off the top of your deck can be disruptive for a lot of decks uh, who, for example, uh, plays one-offs. Yeah. So just to take an example of Flow Wonder is, uh, if you just mill every single time 10 cards at the beginning of the duel, you can get it uh, with the one copy of Statue and a lot of these important one-offs. So what I really like about these guys' idea was uh, we play a deck that it's already really good against tier, and then we include uh, in our deck uh, just the six uh, copies of Keldu and Mudora, so that uh, if my opponent wants to mill me 10, then I get some uh, benefit as well. And I think this makes a lot, a lot of sense. I like it a lot, because at the worst uh, uh, case, I know it sounds really weak, but just normal summoning a Keldo or a Mudora can get you there against yeah. tier, because uh, they have to commit into the battle phase, and usually the normal summon is the Rhino, which means that at the very worst case, you just stop the Rhino. And I think it's, it's a decent idea. Of course, in Madolce, the benefit is that you play Orange of the Herald, right? We saw it in game one. That's because most of the Madolce monsters uh, are also fairy, which is really nice, I think. But I don't know if it has enough to win the whole thing. But it's top 64, so we no, might see yeah. one, uh, one shoe or of, uh, of those. Uh, so I think it's definitely an interesting one. On the other hand, uh, I got to say the Spellbook deck uh, was uh, slightly weaker, but our game state has just been reinitiated, so we can go back to the table for the end of game two. So here we are as we were leaving the match. Uh, uh, the Tiananmen resolved, shuffling away the entire field from the spellbook player, and now the action is back to the Italian, who was still trying to figure out his combos. Are you surprised that he's not playing Abyss Dweller at all? In the I mean, uh, it's uh, definitely a little surprising. Uh, at the same time, uh, Glass Souffle acts as a pseudo abyss dweller. It's not as oppressive, I would say, but it still deals with the cards in the graveyard. So I guess uh, they want to prioritize uh, Souffle. And uh, honestly, I don't really blame the decision, I would say. So that can work. But now, uh, as we were saying, uh, we just get to add a few resources uh, from uh, uh, next uh, turn, and here we'll probably see the souffle, right? Yeah, yeah. Which I wouldn't mind. It's almost uh, eight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> if we get another event in France, then we'll get to eat it there. <laughs> but now uh, play is back uh, as expected. We see the souffle coming down from Alessio. And it's followed once again by the sea start. Same, same thing as we saw in game one. I mean, if it's not broken, why fix it? Uh, it worked in game one. Uh, it should and could work once again. So, impressive turn. Uh, and now it's uh, back to the German player, who in the end phase most likely will activate one of his bestials, uh, trying to get another search off the deck. Uh, unfortunately, the bestials get much worse who would have guessed when you have to banish your own cards for their effects? And uh, this is exactly what uh, the German player has been forced to do. Um, so, what could be the plan? We have a few draws available. 
unfortunately, yeah, that's on the field. Uh, Spellbook of Judgment has been used. Uh, so we would need to, first of all, get back to it and then use it again, uh, which isn't the easiest thing in the world. But yeah, now just some clarification about the effects, uh, which as mentioned, uh, it's essentially similarly to a Mudora, able to shuffle things back and then uh, due to the additional effects uh, get uh, some bonuses. But it's really, really strong because it also makes uh, uh, one of your Madolce unaffected by monster effects. Okay, so we see already a normal oh. summon. Interesting. Uh, we want to see a Jekyll King normal summoned here by Khan. He's uh, going to try and put some spell counters on it. Uh, for any of you, I'll just print it on the screen. Is able to negate a monster effect once he has spell counters on. That's why Alessio is not willing to have any of that uh, and will activate it right away. I mean, I think it's okay, especially because like you're going to put some pressure on your opponent with the Jekyll, especially because uh, can add some. Uh, Spell cards to, that need to be used. Uh, he had the secrets. Um, he chained now, okay, this is good. He chained one of his pistols so that uh, the souffle won't be able to resolve, and he has also the other one. Wow. Double pistol coming down from Khan, uh, who is uh, trying his best to stay in this match uh, and take it to game three. But let's see if he will be able to. I think the Italian has uh, some trick up his sleeves. Uh, uh, and in the end, we already know he has the Spellbook of Life. Uh, and then uh, I think uh, um, the draw shoe as well, right? So yeah, he, he also had the knowledge, knowledge because he, yeah. he bounced it back with the fate. So knowledge and life plus a third one, which might be the book. Yeah. So he gets to the magician potentially. But he already normal summoned, yeah. so I would be surprised. Uh, maybe he can get the Fate, uh, uh, he can get any other other spells. Uh, and yeah, he does get to the Fate, uh, makes sense. Uh, what a card it was back in the day. Yeah, I mean, non back then it was... Yeah, uh... So strong. Non-targeting, banishing, uh, yeah. Or even just the Book of Moon effect uh, was really, really no, strong. It was incredible, you know. Dragon Ruler format and spell books. Without yeah. mentioning Dragon Ruler, no? Yeah. <laughs> good old days, good old days, but we like them just as we like this current format. And now, as mentioned, we get to see a bunch of uh, spells being activated, uh, more counters uh, on the Jackal, and now in a blink of an eye, he will be able to actually negate uh, monster effects. Uh, an interesting play here. We get to see the knowledge, which... Uh, is activated. And now, yeah, we get to see a fate uh, being chained. Yeah, now the Jackal has been activated, 
and uh, on the promenade. And yeah, here he gets to draw two cars with the knowledge. Let's see if he picks up any more interruptions. We are now at four plus two six. So he's trying his best to stay in this. Uh, do you think Alessio has something here? Let's see. But well, looks like Khan uh, was able to come back into this game. Uh, I'd say quite swiftly, because like with the normal summon of Jekyll, uh, he put Alessio into some troubles, because like Jekyll can negate, of course, after uh, spell cards being activated. And also the bestials on the board, uh, uh, I think, put some pressure on uh, Alessio's side. I mean, for sure, you really don't want to be staring at those uh, 2,500 uh, <laughs> monsters. Uh, I wouldn't like it if, uh, you know, I found them uh, on an alley at, uh, at night. <laughs> so, I mean, to be fair, I wouldn't like it if I found you on an alley at night. But that's another story, I guess. What, be what else better could you ask for? Huh? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go there. Yeah. So... Um, I mean, uh, we, can we check if there are any rank 6 uh, plays available for the deck? Uh, yeah, oh, nice. So it's not the Beatrice, uh, mm -hmm. but we have uh, one spicy tech up the sleeve, uh, which uh, I think it's uh, one that was pretty much used by Jesse Cotton in the finals, of course, which is the Wallow. Colonia. And I'm going to bring it up for you guys on the screen. I think it's uh, an incredible card. Yeah. And here it is. So Wallow, founder of the Dra Dragons. Uh, first of all, the relevant effect is already, especially in this um, format, that it gains attack, all of your monsters gains attack based on the cars in the graveyard of course it's not against Madolce that ain't great but then you can detach materials and um, pretty much uh, set a spell which you can use right away which makes it uh, really good against the uh, talent uh, or you can just summon a monster so it's uh, it's a very interesting card I would say And yeah, here I think we are moving to the battle phase, uh, maybe. What is the other phase down card? Uh, it's another promenade. Yeah. First one uh, banished by fate, the second one uh, resolving, uh, but he still uh, loses uh, one of his monsters. And now we mentioned 19 minutes left uh, yeah. at the beginning of the turn. Now there are less than eight minutes, uh, and uh, uh, this could actually come down to a timeout battle. And I don't want to jinx it, but it could be the second row in a row when we are. Uh, commentating uh, uh, this weekend so and they need to be careful because uh, yeah. of course like Madolce's combo takes time and uh, and also can activate a lot of bestials and spell cards as well okay. and with seven minutes on the clock remaining play is back to Alessio it seems uh, so at the very end, uh, he wasn't able to deal that much damage at all to Alessio. Uh, and now it's the opposite thing. Of course, uh, if any of you guys are not familiar with the official rules for YCS, is uh, the timeout rule. Not only does it count 
for draws as in the previous match. But if, uh, since we are in game two and game one was won by Alessio, if time would be called now, Alessio would be the winner of the yep. match because he won game one and he's ahead. So uh, it's definitely something to keep in mind because Alessio can choose to play it safer. And then it's basically as if, uh, if I'm able to deal damage or just uh, OTK, I win. If I'm not able to do damage, uh, I'm still winning the game if time is called uh, before we are both on uh, 8,000. So definitely an interesting uh, line of plays. But for now, we are seeing again the ultimate copy of the Princess Padding, I think. Uh, and uh, gonna move uh, to the battle phase, maybe? Let's see. Or maybe it's considering another link summon. Uh, uh, the padding test definitely there. And yeah, we get to the battle phase. Uh, and the Chocola mode uh, is going to try and attack uh, over the Wallow. Yeah, going to count uh, how many cars are in the graveyard. But it seems uh, as if Alessio might have... Uh, done a little bit of a wrong calculations wow really oh wow that's shocking what a turn of events yeah i think he means calculated it right that's the only oh my oh my Yeah, it's 100 life points, so I did some miscalculations. I might have to quit uh, my streaming uh, <laughs> career and get back to doing mathematicians, you know, <laughs> and teaching uh, in Italian schools, maybe. <laughs> this could get worrying. But, yeah, unfortunately, Alessio, really, with uh, a wrong calculation, is now at least uh, dealing damage to himself when there are four minutes left. I think he heard you when you said uh, equal life points, he was the winner of yeah, the match. Maybe he got right? afraid, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's, it's definitely a surprising uh, lines of play. And I think uh, the end shake uh, comes down uh, from both players. Uh, wow, I really didn't see that coming. Uh, Game three. Yeah. What an ending of this game, too, honestly. I'm shocked. Uh, we were saying uh, uh, just uh, how in game two, Alessio seemed as if he was dominating. He had a lot of, uh, uh, honestly, control in the entire match. But then, uh, <laughs> then, his opponent played the, the one secret weapon which you never saw coming, which is math. And math was strong enough to defeat Alessio, unfortunately, dealing enough life points uh, where it didn't make sense to continue the game because, of course, you then lose in time and yeah. uh, it's a draw. While uh, when you're playing cards like uh, Gaga Gapo Cowboy, you can try and go into game three where you're gonna set up uh, that uh, old fashioned XYZ. And here our players, I think, are already with their decks, a quick side deck. So, without further ado, let's find out who will be the winner of round six in this game three. And here they are, a quick side deck, uh, love to see it. Uh, when there are three minutes remaining, uh, it's gonna be Alessio with the Prosperity, which, by the way, will put in uh, a lot of workers. Uh, it helps the damage dealt uh, to his opponent. So if Cowboy comes down now, there are only 400 life points uh, dealt. And yeah, we bring up uh, on the screen uh, the one and only but 
he gets to reveal okay six cards yeah i was surprised that it was only four we see the shifter the herald the other herald and oh it's not the greatest but yeah it's the duck yeah. it has to be the duck and it is uh, so i uh, once again the vernusilf is added to the end pretty good opening by the italian gonna try his best to stay in this and uh, yeah, Ooh, we don't see the cowboy Ooh, though. Okay. Interesting. Uh, we do not see the cowboy. We see the chocolate mode uh, right away, shuffling back some cards. Uh, and uh, yeah, the Italian uh, really considering his place, but playing super fast, yeah. I would say. Yeah, Alessio knows uh, his deck. Uh... <laughs> Now with the Angeli, uh, let's see if he manages somehow to set up also a cowboy play, because almost a minute remaining on the on the clock. Yeah, uh, that would be uh, lineup I will go for honestly because yeah, I like, mean, uh, if he doesn't go for it, uh, he would definitely. Oh, he does not. Uh no way play is back to his opponent and instead of going for gagaga -Ga -Ga cowboy he chose to forego it in time almost uh, this could be the course we were talking about his opponent just sprinting as fast as he can gets it Ooh. with an effect valor and he's gonna just try his best to deal some damage can he pull this off wow i think uh, let me check fate real quick because i'm thinking about a very unique play and i think uh, this could be the way to win this game if he has uh, access to it you can use it as an enemy controller boost uh, your little magician but there are very few seconds and i don't think uh, khan is playing as fast as he could uh, and he gets rid of it now let's see okay are we finding a solution to win in time or is this gonna be a draw once again few seconds left gonna try and draw two cards but i think he had it i think he had it with spellbook of life and time is cold wow can we find a solution eastern fusion definitely not the one you want to pick up uh, when time is cold and unfortunately it seems like once again this will be a draw for our players uh, what a end of this match Wow, you can see the crowd just uploading and uh, as the game and match and uh, it's unfortunately or luckily for both, can't quite tell, a draw once again. What can we say? We just keep on getting draw after draw when it's us doing it. We have never had a draw previously in the Swiss portion when we were doing commentary together. Now it's two out of two yeah. uh, <laughs> in a row, back to back. Uh, Honestly, I am still surprised, though. I mean, uh, we, we were thinking Alessio was going for the Cowboy lineup. Yeah. Especially because, like, w there was one minute remaining, right? He had a rank four option, and he f didn't go for Cowboy. I think uh, by the end gesture, because at some point he was summoning an Ootcake, it's as if he forgot that he had already normal summoned. Yeah. That's my only explanation, but what a way to lose a game. That's devastating, because uh, he could have gone for Cowboy, he had the effect Veiler just in case. Uh, but I gotta say, on both ends, I think uh, Khan uh, wasn't uh, you know, as quick uh, in his uh, thought process as he could have been, because when your opponent passes, you have one minute, of course you have to be super fast, but when he got effect Veiler, I think uh, by having the Spellbook of Life, what you do is you go for Spellbook, like you go Knowledge, whatever, you fill the graveyard, and then you go Knowledge, uh, you get back something, you make a dark and uh, a charmer, any charmer does it. Fate, turn uh, the monster into attack and you do 300. And that, yeah. it's totally possible with one minute remaining. So unfortunately, I think both uh, missed uh, their chance to victory. And unfortunately, they are now with a record that's unlikely to make it to top 64.
regardless, uh, it was a great uh, show from uh, both. Uh, but as you might guess, uh, this one was a pretty long one. Uh, so we will not be having uh, an interview as there is no winner in this match once again. But thank you guys for staying with us. Uh, this was round six of YCS Dorman 2022. Round seven is coming up with the German team doing commentary while me and Alberto will take care of the last two rounds, round eight and round nine. There are still three rounds remaining for day one. Don't miss any more of the action. Stay tuned and we will be back soon with more coverage.